So the president of Mexico, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, or AMLO for short, he's sort of this uh, left-wing guy down there in Mexico, presiding over a quasi-failed state that does not control large swaths of its own territory, which is de facto controlled by Mexican drug cartels. And we actually talked about this recently on the show last week here in studio. Bill Barr was with us, the former attorney general of the United States. And he'd written a tough piece in the Wall Street Journal about this threat, the cartel threat. And other Republicans in particular are really speaking out more aggressively about it. From Dan Crenshaw to Chip Roy to Lindsey Graham and others. They're angry and they're right to be angry. Because Mexico is a staging ground for these cartels funneling not just arms and drugs and humans into our country illegally. But among those drugs is fentanyl. Much of it originating in China, coming to Mexico and being basically targeted directly into the United States. Other countries don't really have the fentanyl death and poisoning problem that we have. And overwhelmingly, it's coming from Mexico. And it's not just a small problem. 70,000 Americans died last year from fentanyl poisoning. 70,000. And the Mexican government is unwilling slash unable, a combination, to really stem the tide. So some Republicans are speaking up about it, saying this is unacceptable. Tens of thousands of deaths. And the president of Mexico is very angry about it. He's lashing out. He's blaming America for the fentanyl problem, saying it's our problem, not his problem, so back off. And he's effectively running interference for the cartels against whom he has gone very soft. In fact, Bill Barr was telling us when he came to power, he shifted Mexico's official public policy on the cartels. To hugs, not bullets. To stop cooperating, broadly speaking, with counter-narcotics operations with the United States. So, it's clear who's really running the show and calling the shots in Mexico in a lot of very significant ways. Which is scary, which is dangerous, which has dire consequences for us in this country. Then, of course, there's the absolute endemic corruption in Mexican politics. But this guy, AMLO, all indignant, not just indignant and blaming us, but making threats. So here's how he started this rant late last week. Cut 27, I'll translate. No, lo admitimos. A México se le respeta. We don't no accept it. Mexico must be respected. We are not a protectorate of the U.S., nor a colony of the U.S. Mexico is a free, independent, sovereign country. We don't receive orders from anyone. Here, the people of Mexico rule because they, meaning Republicans, are doing this for propaganda purposes. They're grabbing on saying the fentanyl is the responsibility of Mexico. We don't produce fentanyl here. Well, yeah, a lot of it's produced in China, then sent to Mexico to come into the United States where it then gets laced into a bunch of drugs and kills tens of thousands of us. Now, Mexico technically is a free, sovereign country. I'm not sure how free they are. I'm not sure how sovereign they are, given what we were just talking about with the cartels. But if that's all that he had said, I would take issue with it. I would say the finger-pointing and the assignment of blame, because he went on talking about how it's, you know, the American authorities' problems and the American cartels that the Americans have to deal with. I mean, when you've got a staging ground just south of the border, and of course some of this goes back to our terrible border policies under Biden, that is a clear and present danger to the United States. And just like you had Afghanistan and the Taliban harboring al-Qaeda before and then after 9-11... This is a different type of threat, a different type of deadly threat right on our border. And the governor of Mexico, the government of Mexico, is in effect harboring 
this sort of narco-terrorist cabal that are these cartels. AMLO went on to say this, and this is where I really start to see red, because he was mad at American politicians, elected officials, elected by the American people, correctly identifying a threat in Mexico that his government doesn't have the wherewithal or the desire to deal with as Americans are dying by the tens of thousands. And he starts making threats, political threats, against the Republicans who are talking about the issue. He said, starting today, we are going to start an information campaign for Mexicans who live and work in the United States and for all Hispanics to inform them of what we are doing in Mexico and how this initiative by the Republicans in addition to being irresponsible, is an offense against the people of Mexico, a lack of respect for our independence and our sovereignty. Now, here's the threat. He said, if they do not change their attitude and think that they're going to use Mexico for their propaganda, electoral and political purposes, we are going to call for them not to vote for that party, meaning Hispanics because it is an interventionist, inhumane, hypocritical, and corrupt. I mean, it takes some real cojones, Mr. President, to call someone else corrupt when you're the Mexican president, with all due respect. He later added that Mexico and he would be insisting that, quote, not one vote go to Republicans from any Mexican-American or Hispanic-American. The FoxNews.com write-up says Lopez Obrador was responding to calls for action from Republican lawmakers, including military action, to crack down on the continuing smuggling of fentanyl into the U.S. So, I mean, he is going to bat theoretically for Mexican sovereignty, which for reasons I've already explained is in question, and by extension going to bat for the cartels. That's what he's doing. And what he is vowing, what he is threatening here, is foreign electoral interference. He is promising to meddle in U.S. elections, to tell people of a certain ethnic background or skin color not to vote for one party over the other in the United States because he's mad that that party is calling out the problem that's killing tens of thousands of American citizens every year and for which his government bears a great deal of responsibility through their action and, frankly, inaction. I'm so old that I remember people losing their minds over foreign governments interfering in elections through bot farms or whatever, and some of the clumsy things, for example, that the Russians were doing in 2016, which I've attacked. I'm against that, too. But remember, that was like, you know, a great, grave assault on our republic and our democracy. Well, here's a leader, quote unquote, on our border, an ally, supposedly, threatening to actively interfere in our elections with a propaganda campaign to try to give marching orders to Hispanic voters to pick one party over the other because he doesn't like some of the rhetoric about a problem that he doesn't want to have to address. This is absolutely outrageous for him to say this stuff. Shameless. Absolutely shameless. By the way, just the the arrogance that he thinks as the president of Mexico, he can sort of boss around Hispanic Americans and tell them how to vote, like he can control their vote with some propaganda campaign. These are American citizens that he's talking about. But because his last name is Lopez Obrador, they're going to listen to him, take their marching orders from the president of a basket case country that can't even control its own territory. I mean, I I think that he has a very outsized opinion of himself and his influence, first of all. And if I were Hispanic, Mexican descent or otherwise, I would really resent some half-assed politician from some foreign country suggesting that he can tell me how I exercise my right to vote as a U.S. citizen. My reaction would be, back the hell off. But I guess this is the only thing he can think of, right? If 
You're going to have drug cartels operating often with impunity. By the way, this guy said all of this, thumping his chest, making threats about election interference in the United States. He did this, what, a few days after the cartels murdered two U.S. citizens. Now, they apologize because I think they recognize really pissing off America is not good for business. Some of the rhetoric from Republicans would only intensify. If they're murdering our people, that's another, like, directly murdering, not just the indirect stuff with fentanyl. Direct murder. So they they said, oh, we're sorry. That was mistaken identity. We didn't mean to. Here are the guys who did it. Put them in jail. Didn't mean that. Oops. You still have two dead Americans. And just a total lack of control, certainly by the Mexican government, right around our border. Which, I mean, again, it, it throws into stark relief the mess at our southern border. Are you surprised that this left-wing president of Mexico would want to urge people to vote for Joe Biden and his party, given what Joe Biden and his party are responsible for at the border? I mean, they are sort of natural allies in some ways. Lopez Obrador, the Biden Democrats, and the drug cartels. I'm not saying that the drug cartels and their brutality are supported by the Democrats, but the Democrats' policies certainly make their lives a lot easier for them to continue enriching themselves and, yes, poisoning people in this country. When you have weak border policies, there are consequences, and it's not rude or unseemly to call out the policies. I'm not saying that Joe Biden loves drug cartels. I'm saying that the drug cartels probably love Joe Biden's policies. And here we've got the president of Mexico siding with both the Democrats, and the drug cartels against Republicans. In some ways, I feel like this is an anti-endorsement that could help Republicans. And not just among non-Hispanic voters, also among many Hispanic voters. You've got this punk in Mexico trying to tell you how to vote because he thinks that he can dictate that because of, what, the color of your skin or something? That you should exercise your right to vote in America to do his bidding to basically prop up or give a pass to the drug cartels? I don't think so. For him to be threatening, and I do wonder, will the Biden administration, who are they're very much against foreign electoral meddling, they always tell us that, are they going to do one damn thing about this? Even like a brushback pitch, like, yo, stay out of our politics? Uh, I guess we'll see. But, I mean, I saw this story, as you can tell, I'm still mad about it. And by the way, the rhetoric and the concern should not stop. Just because this guy is going to start making, you know, electoral threats that I think are massively overblown and, in fact, could backfire in his position, I guess this is all he's got. Because it's sort of like an or else what. You stop saying these things about the cartels in our country or else what, dude. You can't even control your own country. Your own military sometimes gets beaten in battles by the drug cartels or else what. We've got to protect ourselves and our people. I'm not saying we should go invade Mexico, take over the country. That, no, that's crazy. But Bill Barr is talking about targeted strikes against some of these cartels. AMLO's not going to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He's not capable of it, whatever. He's not responsible for our sovereignty and our safety. Our government is. And our elected officials will say whatever they damn please in this country because that's how we operate in America. It's different in Mexico. And by the way, you don't see people fleeing from our country down there. Right? Mexico doesn't need to build a wall to keep Americans out of all political stripes, of all racial backgrounds. There's a reason for that. So this third-rate politician down there has the gall to threaten electoral interference in the United States because he's angry that he's getting called out, his government, about their total ineptitude at best, about a threat that is real and serious and lethal to the American people. He can absolutely pound sand. And maybe I'm naive to hope that this is even a step too far, even for the Biden administration. And if you had some right-wing leader, north or south of our border, saying that they were going to engage in a propaganda campaign 
to try to defeat the Democrats. I think you might see a lot of outcry about that among the Democrats and their fellow Democrats in the news media. That's just a guess. You know, uh, Senor Presidente, if you don't want these types of things being said, if that's so offensive to you and your sense of, you know, national sovereignty, then by all means, take on the cartels. Partner with us in a meaningful way. Help us secure a border in a way that some of our own officials won't even do. There are things you can do, at least theoretically. Or you can pop off like this. And if he does that, by the way, and if, God willing, Republicans win the next election, now all of a sudden he's got to deal with a lot more Republicans, I hope he comes to deeply regret these words. It's unacceptable. And coming from someone like him, give me a break. Who the hell are you? 